Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be going over some of the major aspects of my AMCAS application. I applied in the 2021 to 2022 cycle and hopefully kind of just showing you guys my application and some of the strengths and weaknesses and tips would be helpful when you guys start to apply. So yeah, let's get right into it. So the first section of the AMCAS application that I wanted to go over is the verified grade point averages. As you can see, my freshman and sophomore GPAs weren't that stellar and they kind of got better in my junior and senior year. And I ended up with the same cumulative average in both my science classes and my other courses. So there's not that much here. I guess there's an upward trend. So the next section of the application I wanna go over is the experience section. And the main approach I went about completing this section was kind of finding a story or an instance that left a lasting impact on me from that particular experience. And I got a lot of these tips from Dr. Mike on YouTube, and he really encouraged his students and his viewers to write in a storytelling fashion. And I'm not gonna read this, but you can like pause it and then read it, and hopefully it can give you some tips to how you would write your section. I'm gonna provide like three examples that I wrote. So one was a volunteering example, one is research, and another one is kind of like a working experience I had that wasn't related to medicine. And I think it's totally okay to list things that aren't directly related to science and medicine on your application because you can show that you are a well-rounded person in other ways and that you are still, you know, participating in things that aren't just always related to science and medicine. All right, the last section I want to go over is the MCAT exam score. So as you can see with all the hearts, I obviously like very loved my score. Just kidding, just kidding. But yeah, let's kind of go over every section and what I got. So starting with CP, I got a 128. Yay! This was actually a very hard section for me, even during the exam, it felt like I just didn't really know what I was doing, so I was very surprised with the score, and I was kind of happy about it. That was the 84 percentile score. Next section is cars, and I got a 125. So this was way lower than I expected and I actually didn't really study for cars that much and my way of studying for it was to read regularly and you know with the practice I was always doing pretty well so I was surprised by this very low score but the good news is that I think if you get a one, at least a 125 in every section, you don't get filtered out of um, like any school's cutoff. So that's the good news, I guess. And that is a 60 percentile score, which is not the best, but the next section is BB and I got 128. So this was, not i think this was still within the expected range of what i was going to get so it wasn't that surprising but yeah i wasn't too upset about this that is an 82 percentile score and the last one is ps got a 127 and that was a 65 percentile score so for me ps i kind of just read that um 84 page document that's like circulating around reddit and that's really mostly like what how i studied for the ps so i wasn't too much into it and i probably should have focused more on cars and ps because all my energy was going towards like cp and bb that i really neglected those two sections and it, it really shows on my like during exam day even though like my practice tests were like much higher yeah, based on what what I studied and what I put my energy towards, it really reflected on test day. 
despite like kind of like the practice test score is not matching up with test day. And this ended in a total score of 508. Yay! That was a 72 percentile score. So obviously I wasn't too thrilled about my MCAT, but I did end up applying anyways. So I didn't go over every single activity and how much time that I spent on those experiences in, on my MCAS application, but I will like list them out just so you guys can see like what I ended up doing during my undergrad years and like what I listed on my application. And now I'm also, I have my iPad here, also gonna just go over some of the strengths and weaknesses of my application. So one strength is that I had an upward GPA trend, so I didn't do so well um, in the beginning, but then kind of redeemed myself later. And then one weakness going along with like grades is kind of my low MCAT score. And then the next one is I had a lot of research experience and like um, a lot of dedicated hours in research. And kind of the flip side of that was I didn't have any clinical experience. I did volunteer in a hospital as a patient escort, but nothing beyond that, like medical scribing, et cetera, et cetera. And also I had no shadowing experience due to the pandemic. It was very difficult to get shadowing experience. Only I only got virtual shadowing experience. And during that time, I actually sent like upwards of maybe a hundred emails just asking physicians in the area if they were willing to like let me shadow them and a lot of people did get back to me and unfortunately the reason was always due to covid that it was just not feasible for them to let me come in and shadow and then i think i feel like personally another strength to my application was my experience outside of medicine i put a lot of time into working and you know and because of that maybe i didn't have so much time to always like dedicated towards like science and medicine related activities but with the time i had i still tried to like make an effort and you know being like that classic pre-med and another strength is that i had strong references and this is something that I found out mostly through my interviews that they would kind of like make a comment on like a specific person that wrote me the reference letter. So that was very nice to hear and kind of like a morale boost that, you know, people that I've worked with and have mentored me saw me in a positive light. And going along with that, a weakness was that I actually did not receive a committee letter through my university because I couldn't make um, all the work requirements to receive a committee letter. And I'm not sure how this reflects on an applicant's application, but some schools actually have you explain why you didn't receive a committee letter from your pre-health committee in their secondary application. So you'll have space to explain that. And for me, it was because I didn't have experience with um, physicians, so I wasn't able to receive any like references from a physician. And for Northeastern, my undergraduate, uh, you need to have that requirement in order to receive a letter like from them. So I ended up deciding to apply anyways, despite like having no committee letter and like a low MCAT score. When I got my MCAT score, I think I really had just three options going from there. And the first option was to retake the MCAT and just apply to one school. And if my score comes back well, I can add more schools onto my application. And if it's bad, then just, you know, have that throwaway school and just not continue on with the cycle. But I wasn't really mentally prepared to study and retake the MCAT in like such a short span of time. And I wasn't confident that I could improve my score so drastically in such a short amount of time. So I ended up not going with that option. And the second option was just to take an extra gap year and get more um, work and research experience. And then, you know, um, study for the MCAT when I was ready to take the exam again. 
And that was definitely something I was thinking about and it was a very viable option. And the third option was just to apply with my score. And I actually chose this for very practical reasons because the job that I was going to accept for my gap year would disqualify me for the fee assistance program provided by the AMCAS. And that program like covers your MCAT materials for once in your lifetime. And then it also covers application fees, uh, including like secondaries, primaries, and also Casper. So I just like grabbed the blanket because it's like super cold in my apartment. And I just wanted to say that I applied for like pretty pragmatic reasons and there's no right or wrong time to apply, especially when it comes to medical school. And in hindsight, I'm gonna have to take out so much loans anyways that saving those few thousand dollars doesn't really matter that much. And I really hope that this video was helpful and I hope you guys all get into medical school.